<laughs> I know, right? All right, so um, stream is up now. So the points from last session that I have to correct the errata that I made mistaken uh, information about. One being, old Mawbone, the dragon, is not a he, but a she. That will be that will be insanely less confusing for me to try to describe events, actions, and things that happen about dialogue and history about the about the dragon when I'm looking at it in the actual manual <laughs> and talking to you instead of trying to convert it in my head because I said he last session. Correct, you got it. Um, so yes, jokes, haha, I got you. I know, I know where you're at. Uh, the other issue is I had said that the cave was to the north. The cave is not to the north because the Crypt Garden Forest is not to the north. It's to the east and a little south. So from that, the direction that we're going is not north to go find the cave in the lair. It is east mostly, but a little bit south. Interesting. I mean, I can try my best, Harper, but I'm not going to make any promises that I'll be able to navigate the words that I'm reading and convert in my head in real time to describe to you guys. <laughs> All right. Just go with whatever is easier. Yeah, 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 exactly. Which is why I was like, let's just redact what I said incorrectly last time so that <laughs> this way I yeah, have an easier time. All right, so... Last time on Dragon Ball Z, we were in the home, the realm, the temple of the dragon, the bronze dragon, and uh, we successfully freed it from the mental imprisonment that uh, it was under by the Acolyth. So now uh, we have seen a vision while in the presence of the shrine to Bahamut that has pointed us in the direction of a potential future fate where the city of Leyland is sacked and ruined by a large and ancient green dragon named Clogielamatar, uh, which is nicknamed Old Gnawbone. And her lair lies to the east in the Crypt Garden Forest. Having seen this vision and the presence, you know, the, the, the quest laid out before you, the concept here is to effectively attempt to reach the dragon and try to parlay or at least get the dragon to see the light and potentially not attack the city-state of Leyland as you have done so much work to bring it back to its current state of semi-glory. So, with that being stated, we head back to the lovely home of Leyland, where everyone had a little celebratory drink and slept off the night, where everyone should have noted a long rest on their character sheets if they had not yet already. Yay, I'm not dying anymore. Yes, no one should be dying anymore. I mean... Got less time left on the clock than anybody else in the party, given that all y'all <laughs> ain't even humans. I statistically well... have the shortest lifespan. I, don't Dragonborn have a shorter lifespan than humans? Dragonborn technically, I think, have the same lifespan as a human, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, but nobody's going to randomly murder and stab a Dragonborn. They're going to be afraid they of might. and run away and be like, ah, a dragon! Debate a ball! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I can find a village or two that would randomly stab me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just saying, like, statistically speaking, Goliaths die young. Yes, they do. That's not They're an age issue, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, old Goliaths are impressive, and they exist, and they're usually a lot older than me. So, ha. Alright, so, we find ourselves on the morning of the day following our now somewhat important mission to effectively ensure that the future of the city stays intact and is not set upon by a ancient and terrible green dragon who apparently will 
destroy everything that we have built in this past uh, span of time between modules one and two. <laughs> Talia is 50. For clarifications for all our viewers in Laos. <laughs> or is it Vietnam? Did we? I think it was Laos that someone said. Okay. Uh, um, so it's the morning after you said, correct, Junie? This is correct, yes. All right. I'll head downstairs into the Ooh. common area and see if I can get a light meal before I go and talk with Griselda mm -hmm. about any and potentially all of this and if she can offer any insight or wisdom. Noted. All right. Fancy. You, uh, you do come downstairs and you, in fact, can get yourself a meal of the proportionate size and uh, hardiness that you're looking for. <laughs> That's good. Uh, how much does it cost me? A whopping nothing. Oh, okay then. It is tacked, it is tacked on to the cost of your room and board for oh, the prior right. night's stay. Okay, I'll sit down and eat it then. I'm not in any real hurry. Correct. Yeah. I'll come downstairs. Is uh, Klug anywhere to be found? Klug is, is not anywhere to be found in the inn the morning after a night of revelry. Okay. I'll uh, just go and join Nakris with breakfast. All right. Did you sleep well, Holly? Mm. These beds are not the most comfortable beds. That's well enough. Yep, agreed. Uh, I am not looking forward to having to talk with Griselda and to realize that she probably doesn't know anything, considering how old this dragon possibly is and how long it's been asleep. Do we have any other options? I mean... No. The only other option we have is just to go into... the Crypt Garden Forest blind, and I would prefer not to do that if possible. What about the Galio? He could potentially, but I fear his studies might be more limited to the tower, and... Well, actually, it's not a bad thought. I mean, he's, like, pretty cool. Did you see what he did to my bag? And <laughs> yes, I'll take it out, and I'll show him all the little rhinestones. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Um, I think I also have something I need to talk with Galio about, too, anyway. But you do bring up a good point, considering... Kalugilamatar. Uh, Kalu. Kalu <laughs> yeah. Old Gnawbone. I'm gonna try and get the name right because being specific with dragons is important, especially ones that are not whites. Galio might have an idea, and since this dragon has scrying orbs potentially, they might have been an invention of Thalavars at some point. And potentially maybe Galio has Galio has come across them in his notes. It's worth a shot anyway, if uh, uh, our other lady friend does not have any information. Indeed. Where is the rest of our party? <laughs> Are they not awake yet? I haven't seen any of them yet. I have to imagine that... Talia is going to be a little bit slower to rise, just because her age and how much fun we had yesterday. And that's the point where Talia comes, like, <laughs> because old. into the tavern room, common room, like, from the front door with, like, a mug of ale in each hand. 
like shirt <laughs> halfway untucked, trousers almost halfway undone, boots untied. Looking a little bit worse for wear, but very well rested. Or I could be wrong and she could be swooning young gentlemen or young ladies, whatever her preference is. Grandma, what did you do? What does it look like I did? <clears throat> it looks oh, like you made decisions. <laughs> decisions. <laughs> Holly just kind of gives this impressed nod and just continues to eat her breakfast. I'm going beyond cougar to silver fox. I got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's the point where Talia sits down at the table. Just a uh, loud... <sighs> pushes the mugs away, folds her hands in front of her, leans over the table very sagely and is kind of like... <clears throat> so, how are we going to kill a dragon? I uh, hear that bards can do funny things to dragons. Let's slay the dragon, not lay the dragon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> bards like to exaggerate. Although, hang on, I actually need to look something up now. I do come down the steps while they're having this conversation. I just go, bards tend to exaggerate. I gotta ask, though, since Kalri has joined our park, how many times has he whacked his forehead, which rises above the clouds? That is not where the, I thought uh... that was going. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard whacked, and I thought it was going to be something completely different. Uh, no, uh, like, you know, the, the overhang above the stairwell that leads upstairs above the tavern common area? Like, how many times has he just, bam, ran right into that? I gotta ask. I have it, because I'm wise, just an idiot. <laughs> Great. We have a cleric who's not an idiot. Everybody run in fear. There's a reason I just try to murder things instead of healing. It's worth noting that the front door of the tavern has a giant hole on the top of it. <laughs> oh. That's eight feet high. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't duck. <laughs> that poor wall. Yeah, someone definitely didn't duck. Somebody goliathed. <laughs> Someone's made of stone and didn't duck. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but to answer your question more succinctly, Talia, don't really know yet. Depends on the dragon and how wise she is. And to reiterate on your thing, Holly, bards tend to lie, but not in all instances. They also tend to be different things and slay with dragons. Baseball. You do have an entire race of humanoid dragons. The dragon is the one normally doing the transforming. So, <clears throat> to my understanding, then, we have an approximate location of this thing's lair, right? To some degree. Yeah. So, but, let me ask you, then, <clears throat> scales since you seem to know quite a bit about dragons is it better for us to fight it within its own lair and where, where things might be a little more confined and it could be easier for us to control the battlefield or where it might be at a disadvantage outside of its lair those are the I only two tactical tidbits i could think of i propose trying diplomacy first first of all before i launch into this um Junie, from my previous roles on Dragonkind and just what I am, do I have a fairly good 
idea of how dragons tend to like to fight? Um, yeah, more or less. You can discern more or less the ways that certain different, uh, I don't really want to use the word species, but right. different variations of dragons will tend to lean on certain skills or actions or attack types or combat specialties, whatever you want to call it, um, more so than others, because it may be their strong suit compared to some of their other variations. Okay. First of all, scales. Ah, oh, I've grown on you. That means you actually care. Uh, Trust me, everybody has nicknames in my head. Sometimes I only choose to use them out loud when I've had a little bit to drink. <clears throat> the answer first calories question unfortunately i have a sinking suspicion that this dragon is not going to be as amicable to talking as some others might be it is a green dragon they tend to be very conniving and deceitful and the way that they work is that they too not do not like to fight up front unless they are very angry but that just makes them all the more dangerous when your back is turned in regards to how to fight it, from what Lama Runtosh told us when we were there, her entire area is surrounded by swamp except for her cave. We have a couple of different options. We can fight her out in the open where she has access to both the swamp, which she could swim through like a shark in the ocean, or she could take to the air. Both instances are not in our favor, considering who we are and what maneuverability she gains by doing that. The other option is to fight her directly in her lair should it come to blows. But that also is not ideal. Green dragons tend to have more, I want to say, tricksy ways of fighting, and also their breath weapon is very noxious and covers a wide area unlike some other species or some other variants of their kind so no matter what battlefield we choose to fight her in she is going to have an advantage in some capacity she is an ancient dragon almost a worm if you will and that makes her all the more frightening to deal with she has the age, the experience, and the magical power that we cannot really comprehend fully at this point. And if she has the scrying orbs that Lamaruntosh says she does, we are not going to take her by surprise easily. So, if... Taking her by surprise is not really an option due to whatever divinations she may have. Um, how best can we prepare for a frontal attack? Is there a way we can figure out... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't dragons usually like to have minions? They do. It depends upon the type of dragon. In her case, I don't know. I don't know enough about her personality to really dictate it. If she was a white, it would be fairly easy because they're more barbaric and brutish in nature and don't really care much for their ilk or kin, and thus nothing really associates with them except if it literally enslaves them and forces them to work for it so that it doesn't eat them. Reds tend to be, and I kind of fringe a little bit at that. They tend to be very similar, except they are far more intelligent and more powerful, so they can tend to sway cultists under their guise. Blacks and blues tend to have minions of some type, although it's normally things like kobolds who idolize them and claim to be the true heirs to their power, and my scales slightly rustle at that. But greens are a bit odd just because they are so unreadable in some of their mannerisms. They could have some 
minions beneath them, such as kobolds, or they could be something more pressing, such as lizard folk or cultists, or she could be by herself, depending upon what she thinks of the smaller and humanoid races. She could very well think that we are beneath her and thus she doesn't have any, or if we are extremely unlucky, she already has a brood of her own wormlings that stay around to protect her, although I don't think that would be the case considering the amount of food and treasure that would require to keep the dragons from infighting with one another. Hmm. So what I'm what I'm thinking then is before we go off to well, attack a dragon in their lair. Um, I'm thinking we need some serious preparations. Obviously nothing on the scale of siege weaponry, but... I mean... Potions, appropriate equipment, gear... None of that could hurt. Um, so, Junie, I think um, at this point, having her everything that Talia needs to hear um, she's going to get a meal to sober up real quick and then she would like to go to the house of the Alvar to confer with uh... God, I can't even remember that prick's name <laughs> Galileo yeah Galileo um, and see if he has any more information about greens and how they might fight Speaking of such things, though, Holly and I were discussing what we could do. Anyway, prior, before you came in after your very exuberant night, what? He was mentioning <clears throat> Talia's raucous evening, coming back in with unkempt clothing and pints in each hand oh not, you said not you I you were talking like out of character for a second I was like what no I wasn't but uh... speaking of which has anyone seen our stone skin friend I see he's left his mark on the inn already as I look he's... to the top <laughs> he's outside playing the flute badly as my 12 performance dictates Oh. <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> well, if we have no other business here, we should go collect our companions and we should uh, go prepare for this adventure. Read. We should probably go to Galio first and visit the house of Thalavar, and then we can talk with Griselda. Galio is the more likely source to have better information, although Griselda hopefully knows about the uh, Crypt Garden Forest. So after finishing, I'll stand up and head outside to talk with flame tongue and inform him of what the plan is um while this is also going on let's say like over breakfast juni can i continue to work on my thing sure give me uh give me some rolls plz okay just one or two what uh, one is probably sufficient during the discourse of the amount of time you spent eating and work and you know discussing with Nakris and everyone else. But um, based upon the prior uh, small amount of progress you had made the night prior and this, you have completed another of your trinkets. Thank you. So I'll step outside. Ah, so that's you I was hearing play this morning. 
he eyes you out of the corner of his eye, but doesn't stop playing. <laughs> We're going to the house of Thalvar, which is the giant mage's tower in the middle of town, to talk with its resident wizard, Galio, to see what we can find out about this dragon and the place she calls home. Are we looking for more ghosts? I don't think we're going to easily be able to find them. If they want to talk to us, I think they can find us well enough from the last time that they talked to us. He shrugs and puts his flute away, stands up, kind of beats his chest. I will protect you, little man. Lead the way. Well, we'll wait for the others, and then we'll head out. I'll All finish right. up my Probably breakfast is. and head out. I recall what you wanted to do, Talia, so I assume that you will complete the breakfast portion of your tasks, and then we'll be heading for the house. As rapidly as possible, because if dragons are involved, Talia wants to get this shit over and done with. Okay. So if everyone's all set and we all meet up, we'll head to Thalabar's tower and see if we can find Galio there. Yeah. I would have a word with the tall one before we go. Which tall one? <laughs> the tall one. Oh. You. The tallest one here. Oh, so flame tongue. Yes. So not the cow, okay. Yeah, not the cow and not the lizard. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the rock. The walking, talking rock. Okay. We can we can walk out as we go and we'll just, we'll, we'll hang behind. Holly just kind of looks up at him. If you'd like, I can carry you. That that is not not necessary. Uh, <laughs> she like digs down into her bag where she stuffed her her latest trinket, and she pulls it out, and it's a uh, it's a bear toad, unlike the one that she gave Nocris, but it's uh, much much larger, like taller and thinner. <laughs> And it has like little Zen features kind of carved into it and a big sword on the back. And she just kind of holds it up as far as she can because she's much, much shorter than Zen. And uh, without looking at him, just says, For you, for protecting him when I could not. He reaches down and gingerly takes the totem between two fingers, because I'm sure it's big to you, but it is extremely <laughs> small to me. <laughs> <laughs> Way to really he, rub it in. <laughs> he brings it up to his eye and examines it. I look like this? <laughs> no. Uh, where I am from, and you may have heard of this because you are from a smaller region, um, my people are the people of the bear, and so we carve little bear totems to help imbue us with strength on our travels. And uh, so this is this is what a Zin bear would look like. He smiles and pulls out a uh, a rawhide necklace that has a similarly carved. Uh, it's not a totem, but it is a small eagle. And says, I like it. I will add it. Polly looks pleased with herself. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of she kind of pats him on the arm and says, you're not as bad as I thought. You uh, make a good addition to the team. And she <laughs> sprints off and she hops on Nocris's back and kind of like kicks him onward to Galio. <laughs> I just look at her. It's like, uh, very well. Let's go. 
<laughs> I pat him between the eyes and offer him some bacon. <laughs> what the fuck? I walk oh, up and grab her, her by the scruff and pick her up and say, I am protecting. Nope, Holly just <laughs> digs her claws protecting. into the armor. She's not to go. <laughs> I am sorry. I do not know how to remove without hurting <laughs> both of you. I, uh... Fine. Does it have an off switch? <laughs> no. She does not have an off switch. And if she did, I wouldn't tell you. Oh. Oh. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he just suddenly, like, slinks to the back of the group. Kind of, like, like, really <laughs> head tilting. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird group. You'll get used to us, or you'll die first, whichever comes first. That guy's are quick. <laughs> but yeah. So, I'll continue heading. I don't know if Holly has re-jumped onto my back or not. <laughs> I never let go. <laughs> so, okay. so, she is still there, got it. There's some gouge marks in your armor from where from where Zin pulled and she didn't let go, but she's, she's still there. That's fine. All right, so like a pack. <laughs> <laughs> so you make your way to the house. Everyone kind of, I guess, sort of hurriedly keeping pace with uh, Grandma as she wants to kind of get to the bottom of this with her all of her focus poured into it. You arrive at the tower and find our similarly always studious Gallo in his office, poring over something. I, when we actually get to the tower, I sent from the group to see if I can try and find what I'm looking for for the hero's speech. Uh. Uh, so you're gonna make a little detour to try to see if you can find one of them bowls. Yeah. I'm gonna go look around. Very well. Uh, you are able to find someone that does possess the proper magical uh, component that you are requiring for your ritual feast. So if you would like to purchase that, you may for a thousand gold pieces. I'll do it. All right, fantastic. You now have yourself one gem encrusted and sparkling bowl of greater craziness or involved in making a feast fit for heroes. All right, so then everyone else at the house. Uh, inside the tower, Galileo is in his office. You uh, enter. And uh, just like every other time when you've entered before, he pays little mind to passerbys until uh, you make your presence known. Galileo! <laughs> he kind of uh, perks a little bit for a moment, but doesn't... Key, let's take his eyes from the page in front of him. Ah, uh, yes, hello. What is it that I can help you with? I nudge knockers. <laughs> I'll move forward a little bit. Possibly ancient dragons and mysteries of the Sword Coast. Oh, well, he, uh, pushes the book a little away from him on the desk and kind of turns in his chair to look at you. Ancient dragons. Interesting, interesting. So, yes, what is it then would you like to try to know? I'll gently let Holly down. Um, what can you tell us about Kalugi Limitar? Ah, 
the mighty green dragon. Hmm. Well, she has been in these parts for quite some time, but only seems to really cause any trouble for anyone when she's either extremely hungry or is up to no good. I'm looking to stir the pot, as we uh, as we might say. Generally speaking, however, she doesn't really take well to humankind. She tends to steer clear as much as she can. We've heard that she tends to like to eat them. Well, I mean, I suppose, like any dragon may, yes, yes, but um, she prefers mm, a more wild game, let's say. Uh, I don't want to speak to her particular appetite or palate, but I would imagine huh. that in comparison, our uh, distinct flavor and texture lacks that sum of uh, what hmm, maybe wild beasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's somewhat comforting to know, perhaps. Do you know of any particular reason as to why she might attack Waylon? Oh, well, hmm. uh, I mean, no, I suppose. It, there's not entirely much here to stand in her way, should she, so that is maybe a bit frightening, but it would only really be if her temper was flared or there was something to gain. That would be the only reasons why I could see such a thing happening. How much information do you actually have about her, by chance? Because from what the Lama Runtash is a bronze dragon, right? Correct. From what Lama Runtash, the bronze dragon to the north, has told us, and her dragon and her scaly eye cult, there wasn't really much to be gained other than she's an ancient dragon who is sometimes known as Old Nawbone, and she lives in the area and she has scrying orbs to keep an eye on everything in Leyland. Well, yes, that is also true. It's It's been hinted about and kind of documented in the past that everyone do be, does believe that she has agents, agents in the field that kind of spy on things for her and report back. Perhaps these are some of the vestiges of these crystal balls that you speak of? Hmm. A dragon that uses spies rather than magic to spy. That's off-putting. Real question, though. If Old Gnawbone does decide to attack, do you have any information on how we might kill a green dragon? Well, there aren't many documented deaths, I suppose I should call them, uh, for green dragons of that age, but... If I had to hedge a bet, your best options would be uh, the way you would kill any other creature. Excessive amounts of visceral damage. Do we know anything about resistances? What kind of hide it has? How thick? Oh, well, it certainly has a quite Things thick hide. Tear. Certainly has quite a thick hide. That, I can assure you. As far as the dragon itself, within its domain of control, most components of magics based upon the earth, things like stone, poison, anything of that nature, would have probably have little use, as that is her domain and what she lives within. The forces of the said nature and its various elemental types kind of flow through her. Hmm. Huh. What about how she fights? I know that dragons have magic. Fangs, claws. Oh, well, just like any dragon, I would much assume that she similarly follows that type, but I, I do not have much to go off of in prior history, unless you'd like me to spend some time researching, but uh, I would assume that the dragon would probably just use all of its usual weapons. Breath weapons, Breathing all of its noxious gas, claws, 
various teeth and biting attacks, potentially even trying to strike you with wings or blow you away. This is the part where Talia steps forward and puts her finger over Galio's mouth like in a hush motion and very seriously looks at him and says, Did you just say that she can breathe noxious gas? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Many other dragons have particular, you know, flames or frost breath, things of that nature, but uh, this particular dragon, Old Narbone, Clog Yimitar, her breath is that of a noxious poison. It's a gaseous cloud that emanates out in a quite large area. And I would not be one to be interested to stay among it, I, I can tell you. Whew. Well then. In that case, I think you and I have some things to speak of. And this is the point where Talia turns and looks at Nocris. Uh, because I know that we both understand magic and how it can be applied in battle quite well. So we're going to need to come up with a plan to counter that. Going to be hard, but the best way to do it would either be a wall of some type that could block the wind, or potentially if we could build a safe harbor of air that is breathable to us. Hmm. Yes, I believe that could work as a proper strategy. You would definitely need to ensure that the air and the gas from her breath does not mix with this zone that you create. And that might keep you safe throughout its duration. However, I am curious that the powers necessary to hold such a barrier would probably not sustain itself should it come under normal strike. the problem because old Naboon, if she is like any dragon or even dragonborn she is not going to simply sit idly by with one attack she will come at us with fang claw and magic all at once she is not going to rest on her laurels what if she's we lived to the age the that she is and i fear that So what if we disperse the gas? Because if I'm being honest with you, and this is the point where Talia goes into like full on instructor mode, like you can see it like she kind of like straightens her back a little bit. Her armor gets a little more <clears throat> settled in. And she kind of does the knife hand thing a little bit. Full your own instructor. Yeah, she's like almost full drill instructor, but like nice about it. So, well, let me think for a moment. Based upon the assumed concentration of the gas, the proper way to disperse or remove the gas from an area would likely be high winds or some sort of vortex to draw it out, but Based upon the concentration, I, I would imagine it would take quite a bit of time. It could not be done in a fast manner. What about this? Uh, by the way, real quick, Juni, um, what is above the group right now? Is it oh. a ceiling? Yes. Yeah, there's basically floorboards from the, the floor above you in the tower. Okay. How disorganized is Galio's office right now? Uh, I mean, it's semi-disorganized. There's various tomes of things that are kind of open on his desk with some papers that are kind of underneath some of them. But for the most part, he is somewhat orderly because, you know, he's very studious, I guess is the word I will use. Hmm. Well then, um, so Talia holds up a finger thinking for a second and she looks over to Nocris for his opinion on this but first she's going to go over to Galio's desk and put the cap or cork into Galio's inkwell so that it doesn't mm -hmm. spill and then she casts gust of wind inside the room okay what is the uh, spell card for gust of wind 
I am displaying now. Thank you. I just need to see the strength of the direction of the air. I want to aim it upward because I know that like it's probably going to knock us on our ass, but I wanted to make sure that the inkwell didn't go flying all over Galio's notes. He is a wizard. Yep, yep, yep. So, yes, gust of wind would work in a vertical direction like that. It will effectively kind of pull people that may kind of lift off their feet momentarily and have kind of a sense of weightlessness briefly as it uh, tugs at them. Um, assuming that they pass, let's see here, pass the strength check to hold themselves or kind of be lifted off their feet into the air physically. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Zin, Zin doesn't go anywhere. Nakris doesn't go anywhere. Talia, you uh, you lose your feet a little bit. We're doing a strength check. Yes. A saving throw or just a straight check? Uh, saving throw. Oh, in that case, mine would be four points higher. Mine too. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Holly, uh, Holly lifts. Holly lifts off into the air. I kept her. <laughs> I make a point to catch her. Okay. I Noted. make a point. And Cow and Cowry is not presently there with you guys, so <laughs> Cowry. Cool. Um so yes. Like the seashell. And and Gamelo basically doesn't move from his seat, uh, because he has kind of a nullification amulet that is uh, present on him so he is not affected by the air the draft of air that you forced upon the room well that kind of thing may work yes however you would need the current of that type of air to be sustained for quite a while to be able to properly vent and draw out all of this gas that would breathe forth from the dragon Talia keeps the line going. <laughs> I think. Um, no, Knight, kidding. why don't you go I ahead and ask your question? Indoors. Because I'm not sure if Junie saw it. Uh, Zin kind of pipes up and mentions We don't have to fight her. Lamaruntar said that we could bargain. So maybe there is something that you know that she likes. What could be used to bargain with her? Well, uh, I mean, I suppose if you were to offer her food or potentially riches, uh, that may work. Uh, dragons are very interested in both of those things. Um, let me see here. Let me see. He thinks for a moment. Well, I know also that Clark Liemitar is quite fond of the current happenings of the world. Probably the reason why she sends out so many spies to investigate and keep her informed. Because she herself rarely leaves to go out and see what's happening herself. So this particular curiosity could potentially be used against her, I suppose. If you could find a particular event, rumor, happenstance, something that you could draw her interest, you may use that as a bargaining chip, should you find one. For a person with scrying stones it seems an odd gift. But what do I know? Eh, I say right. I say we throw every story we have at her. And when that fails, we throw rocks. And when that fails, we eat her. You just said if it fails. So we're going to move from rocks failing to gnawing on her. I give him a very quizzical look. I like the spirit, but I'm not there to approve. <laughs> uh... 
I think you do bring up a good point, Zen, that if she covets something and it is knowledge or stories that she covets the most, we might have someone adequately suited for that job if they are willing to try it, as I look at Holly. What? I'm sorry, we just got a text from Knight's dad. Uh, well, just what was that last thing that you said specifically, Cole? Oh, um, I said specifically that you know, if it's knowledge or stories she covets so much, then we might have someone particularly suited to that job, as I look at Holly. <laughs> Shit. If he's no. willing for it. Uh, so this is out of character. Um, you know what would be a good happenstance is the story about the uh, the dreadnought and the fallen kingdom of what? Uh, what the fuck was it? I think I have it. Check my notes again. But that's that's like huge news. Like a, a kingdom fell, and there's a dreadnought. Going out trying to what liberate it? The dreadnought belongs to the death god. Fucking uh, who cares what his name is? Mergle. The loser <laughs> one. Yeah, you know the fucking dead dude. Like, yeah. That's pretty cool. It's yeah. not something she would probably know about either, considering we handled that situation fairly quickly. I like to think. Uh -huh. I mean, I was there for a few days. But and I mean, for your notes, the uh, the individual who is in charge of that sect of Merkel is called Uluran Mortus, or Uluran. Everyone would pronounce the U L A. So I say that if we have any chance of persuading her, again, this is out of character, but something for everybody's thought process. Uh, that we should bring up the story of Talos, uh, because this group challenged Talos and won. Two of us didn't. Hey, whatever. Uh, three of us didn't. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, anyway, th irrelevant. Uh, so challenged Talos and won. Challenged a dreadnought and won. Um, and are currently on the hunt for a possible necromancer related to Nacris. And, I mean, shit, if that's not enough of current events, we're literally current eventing. <laughs> yeah, we, we killed a Chimera. We, we didn't kill a Chimera, we killed the Chimera crew. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we wiped out the Chimera. Chimera. <laughs> I feel like the Chimera might be more impressive than killing some humans. Yeah, you know, kills the crew. Yeah, you know what? That actually came out wrong. I went to say, didn't kill just a Chimera. We killed a Chimera <laughs> and, <laughs> and its crew. <laughs> a dragon might be more impressed by the Chimera than the crew. Oh, of course. Uh, just going to throw that out there as he did that. Just saying, and a spray of blood, you're welcome. <laughs> One of my was finer very feats. Argo was very <laughs> impressed when he told her. It's fine. <laughs> ah, so that's how he finally gets in the pants. It's blood. <laughs> <laughs> no. This, Can we not talk about blood and pants like ever again? <laughs> the conversation between Argo and Azzy is uh, it, it has actually been, I believe, for the most part, fleshed out. And uh, John, I'll be talking to you after session about uh, Azzy and uh, Argo. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I have. Zin doesn't know any of that, so I can't directly have him say, "Hey, yeah, we did this," but the other you guys know. So mm -hmm. no, I don't, sense. I don't, I don't think a fight with a worm is going to end in our favor, especially if we had a hard time with an Alip. That Alip did crazy amounts of damage to us for no fucking reason. That was an, a fun thing to see. Just the frontliner is getting hit real hard. As he didn't take any damage, just or, I'm sorry, Zin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as he didn't take any damage. Wonder why. Yes, but we could potentially do that as well. We have our options, thankfully. I am just prepared for the worst, as we say. As you know, Galio, green dragons tend to be very flippant sometimes with what they want and what they desire. Yes, this is true. However, if you play to their interests, you may find yourself some additional leverage than you may have had before. The 
Agreed. Um, do you know anything about the Crypt Garden Forest, or should we more speak with Griselda on that matter? Oh, well, yes, the forest has been there for quite some time. Uh, it's definitely been present for many, 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 many years. And uh, within it is much you would find in any forest, except it is maybe a bit more boggish than others. But that all stems from the Mayor of Dead Men, so it can't really be ha helped in, in any way, shape, or form. Is the Garden Forest particularly noxious, if you will? Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. No. It is uh, simply patchy at times, where it may have bogs here or there, and potentially standing water, but otherwise it is uh, your standard forest. Simply a wooded place with soft ground underfoot. Sad. Do you have any old tales of this dragon before we go and deal with her. I'd like to know a little bit more about her personality. Is she paranoid? Is she more talkative than we're giving her credit for? This Kalugi hmm. Limitar, what is she like as a intelligent being? Well, hmm. from what I've seen in various scripts and texts of some antiquity i would say if i had to draw a personality from them that this particular dragon's uh, methodologies or perspective is one of mm, a less talkative nature and more kind of uh, how do i say persuasiveness simply that uh, she has her goal in mind and seeks to root it out through whichever way means of cunning she may find. But uh, I do believe that in almost every instance that I've come across, she has some manner of follower, or you know, let's call them uh, worshippers, I suppose, that may, uh, may aid in her abilities to enact her plans. Are they kobolds? No, no, they're not at all. They come from many walks of life. They simply believe that this particular this particular dragon may be a living goddess of the land. Interesting. Those poor deluded bastards. They might not be half wrong if she literally views herself as protecting her horde. No matter how vile she might be, if all she's doing is protecting, quote-unquote, what is hers, they could very well view it as protecting the land. Hmm. Are we not part of the land? Not her land. Well, she could very well view this entire city as an affront to her land, depending on how old she is compared to it. If she was here prior to all this construction, then she could view it as a blight on her pristine horde. Well, I would, I would say that that is probably not the case, as the lines, let's call them the lines of possession for the dragons of the area, would mean that there would probably be some infighting in this area because of uh, distances of clayed claims and layers. It would be on the fringes of a few different locations, and I don't believe that anyone would directly have laid claim upon it, lest they be sought out by the others that had fringing uh, borders with it. Oh, at least there's that silver lining in all of this. Does anyone else have anything for Galio since I'm all out for this particular item? Not mean. Uh, 
Nope. I'm going to take that as a no across the board. <laughs> I'm going to hang back for a little bit because I have some questions to ask Galio just one on one. I am buttered gutted. I stay with you. I will be fine. You can go and protect the others. I carry the kitty cat outside. <laughs> Did you ever put her down from when you caught her? Oh. Holly's just kind of giving up at this point. <laughs> She's not happy about it. She's just giving Nockers this look. Like, please. Zen, put her down. She is a grown woman. She can take care of herself like that. No. And he turns and walks out. <laughs> I want to do... I want to do a claw attack on Zen's hand. Okay. You miss. Your, your claws fail to uh, <laughs> scratch scratch at him uh, s substantially enough to cause any noticeable damage to him. I regret giving you a present. <laughs> Oh, I'll grab a cat. <laughs> Alright, so you find yourselves outside now, and Nocris remains inside with Galileo. I'll let you guys decide what you want to do first, since my stuff might take a little bit. Well, I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait outside for you. In my arms. No! <laughs> if I finish my shopping, I'd like to meet back up with them and see what they okay. talked about. Very well, very well. The other thing I can note is that the other thing that was on the docket would be to go and check in still with Griselda to see about any knowledge that she may have in terms of things with the Crypt Garden Forest and to kind of uh, follow up and note about the happenings to the north with uh, Lamaruntosh. I do not have a good rapport with this woman on this character, so <laughs> sounds like a job with a different, for a di for a different person. <laughs> sounds like a job for the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Chris. <laughs> so Zen, please use that voice when he calls for Nakras. <laughs> All right, well, apparently everyone else is going to yep. just hang around and wait because they need the okay. face to be able to go have a conversation. So I guess so. You can, you can talk with Galileo now. Okay. Um, Galileo, what have you learned anything of the note and the finger that I left you with last time we were here? Ah, yes, 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 yes. He, he reaches over into a small little case that he has off to the side on his desk and opens it, pulling the folded paper and the finger out. So having analyzed this closely and conferring with many of my friends back in Neverwinter, I can tell you that this is in fact a method of communication of sorts. I don't quite know how it works. None of us truly do, and I don't think we wanted to invite the sort of magics that are at play here to actually test it, but something with this finger here, he holds it up and shows you and kind of unfolds the paper, and potentially either drawing on this page with the shape here in this rune, or simply pressing upon it, I'm not entirely sure, seems to link or draw some form of communication as if it's a bond or a link between the individual holding the paper itself and what I fear to be a quite evil being. How evil, exactly? Well, if I'm to draw all of the necessary components of what this belongs to, I believe it to be of the red fingers, which would mean we are looking at a quite powerful lich. I was afraid of that. 
Thank you. You've been much help with this. Oh, Do yes, you... you are quite welcome. If, if you'd like to take them, you are welcome. Otherwise, I can keep them under lock and key, magically protected and kept safe out of the hands of anyone. But that is up to you. You can certainly take them also. I think for now... I will leave them with you, but... Depending upon how long we stay here before we deal with... Old Nawbone, I may return for them, because... Unfortunately, that particular finger belongs to someone that I know all too well. And frankly, he has made it very clear that there is a plan afoot. And I need to find out what it is. All right, very right, very well. He kind of nods at you for a moment, thinking quickly. He's like, oh, well, I suppose this gives me an idea for... A little bit of a test. One hmm. moment. He turns around and goes into a larger cupboard that's kind of hidden behind the door in his office. Opens it and pulls out a small pouch and a uh, an odd-looking silver bell. Keep this pouch with you, and should you want this particular item, simply ring this bell three times, and it will chime here for me. And I will place it inside of this particular end of the, let's call it dimensional pocket, so to speak, of that particular item I've just given you there. And you can simply draw it out as you wish. Okay. Is this a particular item that I'm getting, John, or is it going to be custom? It's just kind of a customed uh, little pouch. No bigger, okay. really, than like your hand spread out that only has like one direction and that's mm -hmm. to, to draw out of it as if you're drawing from you know a pocket dimension however yep. you do not possess the dimension or access to it or the ability to place things inside of it almost like using the bell is kind of calling out the item that's slotted for you to then draw it when you're ready See, this way, I, you can have it whenever you want it, and uh, it will also help me to test out this particular methodology of delivery. Thank you, Galio. I appreciate this. Indeed, indeed. I will be sure to use it at some point, I am sure. Thank you. You are quite And well. I place the bell and the pouch into my bag. And with that, I then head out. All right, very well. You leave the tower, and as you are making your way down the path, you see all of your familiar faces hanging around waiting for you, having seen Cowrie rejoin the group on the path, and they seem to be having a conversation. Are we all set and ready to go? We are ready to eat. Well, first we need to talk with Griselda before we eat. She does not like. Well, there's no better way for her to make amends with you than by talking. Let's go. And I make sure to insist that Zin and everyone comes along. We're off to see Griselda. <laughs> All right. So everyone in tow, you make your way to the square, seeing uh, what appears to be the endings of the morning's hustle and bustle, with people coming in and out of the square, you know, dealing with matters with the uh, the council. Griselda sees you from a quick conversation she's having with a uh, a 
pair of individuals discussing what appears to be something about the walls as they keep pointing and pointing and pointing at the walls. And she keeps nodding at them and assuring them that it will be done and that it will get taken care of, kind of dismissively, so that she can clear them from her, her cue. And uh, as she does so, she, as she does so, she kind of waves to you, assuming that you're here to see her, yeah. to call so, you over. Yeah, I'll head over. <laughs> Zin leads the way this time, <laughs> kind of parting the sea of people as he walks with his Goliathness. <laughs> <laughs> and as Griselda sees him kind of come into view, coming towards her, she rolls her eyes in sudden disappointment <laughs> of what will probably be a displeasing conversation. <laughs> this bitch! <laughs> she sees Zin and the party arrive in front of her. Ah, yes. Well, hello, my particularly large friend. What is it that we can do for you this morning? <clears throat> we have dealt with a bronze dragon to the north, and the town is in danger, and we are going to stop it. What do you know of... What was that place called? Old Narbone. Old Narbone. Uh, well, one, thank you for your assistance. Quite thanks. Two, what is this about danger? And three, Old Gnawbone would probably be located in the Crypt Garden Forest, as that was where her lair was last had to be, but that was mm, hundreds of years ago. I assume it's still there. Is it nods? Yes, we know of the Crypt Garden. What do you know of the Crypt Garden? Because we only know the name of Crypt Garden. Well, uh, Crypt Garden Forest is uh, a little wetter than most forests, let's say. However, there's the usual types of things you'll find there. Wild animals, creatures, some large uh, arachnids of types, and things that may go bump in the night, should you be looking to find them. We are looking to find Old Nabon. Oh, well, um, hmm. I don't know that she's there, but her lair certainly is. We know that she is there. Do you have a way to get to her lair through the Crypt Garden? Uh, no. I can't say I've ever been there before myself. It's simply a rough idea of where it is. Could you point it out on a map? Sure. Uh, she pulls a map out and kind of thinks aloud for a moment. She's like, well, if it's literally in from here and down. And probably about here. She marks a, a little spot on the map for you. Thank you. I give her ten gold pieces and say, I am sorry for being rude. Well, um, apologies accepted. All right, I am doing the good. And I turn to Nakris and I say, I have done as you have asked. And I give him the map. Thank you. As I take the map. <laughs> Griselda. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so exasperated with me. I do not understand. I did everything right. I am the best. Yes, you did everything right. It's just the little hints of ego that still need to come down a little bit. That's all. I do not understand this word, ego. Personally, I'm impressed. See? Someone with culture. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised, you two? <laughs> so I say this, I just look at Griselda. We're trying, and to Flame Tongue's point, we could you give us more details on the types of creatures that could possibly live there? You mentioned giant arachnid, arachnids and other things that go bump in the night. Anything in particular for legends or rumors in the area that we should be particularly wary of? 
Well, um, to the south, many, many things are usually undead, as it has been for the mayor of the uh, mayor of the dead itself. It was a uh, kind of a great misfortune uh, where there had been fighting and warring, and one particular mage who used to live there uh, had gotten fed up with it and called forth the sea to wash it all away, and so. The sea, having drenched the land, remains. Thus, the swamps and the mare of the dead men. But uh, many of the areas which you'll find among the forests, uh, home to snakes, various things of grown size that have been kind of left alone for far too long. So I would say in that regard, uh, be wary of the undead and be wary of uh, oversized wild things. Understood, and that would explain the myriad of undead that we encountered the last time <sighs> when you told us about it and the Chimera crew. Um, there's no other significant landmarks that we should be aware of that we might come across, correct? Mm, no, in among the forest there's really not much in the way of discernible markings, but you're going to want to head roughly towards the middle. It's a little off to the left, perhaps, but somewhere around that region I marked on the map there for the big guy over there. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, has there been any other news since we've been gone and dealing with the issues to the north? Oh, nothing new here in this. You happen to be a stonemason looking for some additional mortar to shore up the walls by the gate, but uh, otherwise, you know, nothing, uh, nothing new has really come about. As a word of caution to you, and I kind of lower my voice so that only people in the immediate area can hear me, what Zinn mentions in terms of danger, he is not wrong. We talked with Lama Runtash, the bronze dragon to the north that we were dealing with, and it seems by the graces of Bahamut or some other being, we had a vision possibly, or we have it on good intel that old Nabone, Kalu, if you want to even use part of her name, might have her sights set on Leyland for some particular matter, so rebuilding the walls might not go remiss if it can be expedited in some way. I do not promise that they will help much with a dragon, but every bit does. Well, grim news. That is for sure. Well, I will make sure that everyone is ready on the defense as much as possible, but if this is anything like our prior runnings with uh, Talos, you will be our saviors yet again. Holly kind of steps forward from the back of the group. Griselda, I need you to be honest with me. Have you or anyone in Leyland disturbed the surrounding natural forces? No. No. Not at all. Not to our understanding, at least. I can't be sure that we didn't cut down a tree that may have been in some sacred alignment with others to hold some portent or anything of that nature, but otherwise we've done nothing, no rituals, no anything of that nature that would have unsettled the balance, let's call it. Do I believe her? Go ahead and do an uh, intuition, or what is it? Uh, insight. 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 You do. Okay. Well, I'll just kind of nod. If you hear anything that seems off at all, or that could have in, incurred the wrath of this dragon, please let us know. It may help us with trying to tame her ire before she comes and destroys all of this. I will certainly let you know. But for now, I will hasten our defenses and uh, look to the skies. It will the come by. Thing. 
think the only thing that goes against the natural order is the fucking zombies that we've been slaughtering <clears throat> left and right. Is that and the really possible natural? necromancer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That goes against the natural order. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean... That, that would be actually a worthwhile mention to the green dragon. Eventually, we'll have to try it and see what happens. Well, thank you, Griselda. Um, did anyone ever leave a note for us or anything after dealing while we were gone, in particular, probably around the time that we had finished dealing with the issue to the north? S so you're asking if anything new from anyone else has happened in regards to stuff since Or we asking done. if someone came forward and left her a note in regards to the last job that we took. Oh. Uh, no, I haven't seen anything. No mention of it, no recollection, no reward, but yeah, seeing as how you did us a, quite a favor and eventually have repaired some of our future dealings with our former patroness, I will... Yeah, I will compensate you. I wouldn't worry so much about that. I was more trying to see if the person who had gotten in contact with us was still around for... They might have had more answers, but... Uh, I have not heard anything, no. But if uh, anything does come up, I'll be sure to let you know, and I will keep your repayment on hand for your return. Thank you. And with that, I'll head out of the town square, and then I guess we gotta decide what we want to do exactly. This is true. <clears throat> um, I guess... Well, we can head down towards the Umber Hulk's Shell Inn and kind of go more towards the docks so that we're slightly alone because most of the fishers should be out at this point out to see or what have you and then um so we have all the information that we're going to come by unfortunately not many people seem to go into the crypt garden forest nor into the dead man's mire and we know that Kalu Gilumatar is very secretive, but she does have her eyes and ears in the world, and she could very well covet information and stories above all else. We know that she's going to be breathing poison on us due to her color affinity, and that things of earthen, stone, and poisonous magic will not really affect her at the end of the day. Talia, I think you had some ideas in terms of making sure to try and clear the area should things turn south and she tries to kill us with her breath. But we don't yes. have much else. I'm also concerned in case she leaves her lair and decides to go after the town. So. Oh. Mm. If she chooses to do that, I don't think we have much way in the way of stopping her aside from us. So we will, if it comes to that, we will have to try and make the best stand that we can. Just go fuck with her horde. <laughs> that is the best way to piss her off. Damn. Draw her aggression. If I can get a night's nice rest, I can prepare the hero's beast for us to have some protection against her poison. But I would need to, I would require rest before I could get it ready. I think that's fine. I think the travel that the map Griselda marked for us will take us a couple of days to get there anyway. Correct, Junie? I'm not wrong in thinking that. This is correct, yeah. The amount of time it'll take you it <clears> is <throat> not on a particular path, so it'll be a little bit of uh, off-roaded travel. And will take you probably a, a day or two to get there. Going to the butthole. So I think we have time 
for the spell, so you don't need to worry about it right now, Calry. But in the meantime, we should probably see if there's any last minute things that we want to get. I would recommend anything that will help us traverse slightly soggy earth. And although I don't think the town will have something due to its still rebuilding sentiments, we might be able to. Um, is there a local wooden sawmill here, Juni, or no? Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a there's a lumber mill and like a you know carpentry area. That's probably where Krug work. <laughs> probably right. Probably. We might be able to at least speak with the saw and lumber mills and see if maybe they have some devices that might help filter the air for us a little bit. I do not I do not say that it will completely allow us to breathe freely in her presence should she choose to try and poison the air, but it could give us possibly some small protection against whatever noxious fumes make her lair her home. Did you guys ever watch the D&D movies? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this first one, one at least. There's this one with this black dragon. I think it's a black dragon. I don't actually remember. But they go to its lair, and its whole lair is just like, has this like cloud of fog on it. And mm -hmm. it's like deathly poison. And I like, think that's what we're going to be walking into. We're just going to walk inside and die. It's going to be great. <laughs> this is how I want to go. Yep. And then are going to come back to just corpses. <laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> But yep, that's Which why. I... <laughs> that's why I suggest the lumber and sawmill because they might have some tools that can help them breathe better. They'd be the most likely places to have it. So let's use the next couple of days to prepare and try and see what we can find to make our journey easier. Okay, how many days do we want to take for preparations before we actually get there, dude? The bronze dragon give us a timeline no i don't think she did no there was no direct timeline given but it's a potential future that could unfold yeah so basically we'll take a couple of days get ready here finish up anything that you might need to finish up before we go and then we'll head out and it'll be a couple more days on the road okay if you guys are going to go to the sawmill, I'm going to go back to uh, Calio. Um, I would like to speak to him and research some specific spells and maybe see if we can get some scrolls for those spells. Because Talia is going to try and focus on some more protective measures as well. But she knows magic, so let's use magic. Okie doke. Um, Holly is probably going to take some time to, like, really sit down and make a bunch of potions. Okay. Yeah, Zen goes to the peculiarity shop, shop looking for antidotes and poisons. Okay. I mean, potions. <clears throat> We'll head to the sawmill then and speak to them. All right. And Calry, what are you planning? Are you gonna try to do your preparations? I'm just yeah, I'm just gonna head back to her room and meditate on it on my work and figure out if I can do this. All right, perfect. All right. So first and foremost, uh, we'll start with Zin heading to the all the various vendors looking for antidotes and healing potions. <coughs> From that, you find that some of the healing establishments do in fact carry some antidotes for various poisons, and uh, you can purchase them. How much and how many? Um, you can get, let's call it, 12 antidotes for the low, low price of 75 gold. I'm too broke for that, so that's out. Okay, well. I buy 35 gold pieces worth of those antidotes and potions. Okay. So you 
gain the uh, access of four antidotes. I just realized that I don't have proficiency with the herbalism kit, so I can't make potions. Um, so given that, I would have gone with Zen, and I'll pick up whatever he can. Okay. So you can have 12 potions. Uh, so, I'm sorry, potions or antidotes? Antidotes. Basically, think of them as a potion against poison. Okay. So, and um, how much gold was that? So, if he's paying 35, you have to pay 40. Okay. But between you and the group, you have access to a dozen of said vials. And in terms uh, of healing items... Yeah. Um, between all the various areas going around, you can gain the total of probably about 20 normal healing potions and have access to six greater healing potions, should you want those. How much are the greaters? The greater healing potions are 25 gold apiece. And so there's six? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll take all of those. Okay. And you want the 20 normals, or you want to leave those alone? Um... I'll take four of the normals. Okay. The normals cost you five gold apiece, so that would be an additional 20 gold. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry to keep asking this. I'm looking for the potions on the item list for the, like, antidote or whatever all i see is antitoxin yeah that's basically what it's going to be listed as i think i don't think there is quote unquote an antidote per se because the anti potions of many different things would be based upon the type of inflicted you know whatever for the ailment and you're yeah gonna, you're Herbalism. only really going to have yeah you're only really going to have one that's going to go against poisons which would be toxin or toxic damage like that like the herbalism kits even say like proficiency with the kit is required to create antitoxin or potions of healing. So Right. Okay. And you said a dozen of those, right? Yes, a dozen of those. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will go next to Nakris at the lumber mill. Where you, All right. Where you enter the uh, the trade area and see the what you believe to be kind of the foreman or the head leader of the mill, uh, kind of behind a desk with some papers and looks like a ledger. He catches he catches your eye and he, he notes that you're there, welcoming you. Master, foreman, and carpenter, I have an odd request of you. Well, I suppose these days anything is strange, unless it's simply building a wall. Unfortunately, it's not a task that simple. We, me and my companions, are heading into the Dead Men's Mire. We might be heading into an area with rather noxious fumes and I was hoping because of your work with the sawmill and sawdust that you and your people might have a few potential breathing apparatuses to help filter the air somewhat when you're working with wood. I know it is not possibly much protection against gases and poisons, but every little bit could help some of those in my group with less hardier constitutions than my own. Well, yes, I suppose. We do have these uh, kind of masks over here, and he points over to them, and they more or less look like some kind of woven face mask um, covering the nose and mouth. It basically just ties around behind your head and is, you know, appears to just be some kind of layered fabric 
But, uh, yeah, these work well enough for uh, sawdust. I'm not sure what other protection it may give you, but um, anything that has a particulate to it, uh, it, might, it might work. It could work. Thank you. How much will it cost for me to grab? Five of those. Oh, for five of them? He thinks for a moment, and he looks at you again. You I can right. tell you there are a few that are bigger than me, if that is your next question. Uh, that was part of it, yes, in terms of size. I have to figure out what we may need for you here, but... Let me just think here. You don't happen to be related to the uh, individuals that saved us previously, are you? Possibly could be. Which particular incident are you referring to? Well, when the lightning from the, came down from the sky, all kind of ugly-like, and we were in a bad way. We didn't really have any of the walls up then, and it's, we've gotten quite better with it now, but mm, there still needs some work. Yes, that would more than likely have been us. Ah, I see, I see. Well, in thanks for your assistance, simply take them. I will not charge you anything. Thank you. Um, hold on, I'm... Adding something else to my gear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so the just the gist of the masks that you're getting now are basically just like uh, treat them as an accessory kind of equipment item that you can wear. Mm -hmm. It's more or less like a woven bandana styled kind of thing that goes around your face that acts as a mask to help filter out particles like sawdust. All right, I'll just say particle mask then. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. Or custom. Yep, custom. You can list it as particle mask or like uh, <laughs> lumber mask, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So all of you can add one of those to your list of um, custom items. Just to make sure you guys all saw it, please, uh, please add one potion of greater healing and two normal healing potions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So then Calry is doing his Zen focusing kind of thing, meditating on his current events. And uh, you said you know, one greater to normal, one greater to normal. Yep. And praying and all that good stuff that a cleric does. And then when you are ready, Talia, we will discuss your conversations with the man in the tower. Can we just start calling him the thing in the tower? Uh, I mean, you could, but he may not be happy about it. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not going to argue with that title. Face. You might not get your throws. I've definitely got a couple of ideas now, that's for sure. So, yeah, I'm going to go with two ideas in particular. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming I can get right to Galiota, speak to him. Yep. Yeah, um, there's, he's, he's not doing anything important, quote unquote. He's still there in the tower. Um, so I, I'm looking for scrolls of two particular spells, um, but then I, I don't know what you might call them, um, but the ones that I'm looking for, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to figure out how to link these from beyond directly to the page, because I don't have um... them on my character. The spell linking should have a thing that'll come up on the page and beyond, regardless if it's on your character sheet or not, to be able to like send or do like send to VTT or something like that. Ah, okay. So I'm looking for that spell. Okay. And let's see if I can pull up the other one. 
Okay, good. It didn't reset all my filters, because I can only cast very specific types of spells that are all, quote unquote, technically on my spell list. And where is this other one? So I have to go to the details page before right. I. Mm -hmm. And then this one. I'm definitely willing to pay handsomely for both. Mm, I see, I see. Well, I don't happen to have any on hand with me immediately, but I could certainly put out the call for someone back at the tower to get to work on these right away, and I could have them ready for you in the morning. Yes, absolutely. Um, How much will you be charging for your services? Well, for for the warding wind, it would be. Let's see the inks. Uh, let's call it uh, discounted. We'll give it to you for 170 gold pieces. Deal. Very well. And for the uh, for the wall, well, that one is a bit trickier. Hmm. That one's going to run you about 679. Ouch. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. If it can help me save my friends' lives, then yeah, it's it's worth the price. All right, very well. I will have them begin now and get started. If you bring payment in the morning, uh, when I have them in hand, I will do the exchange then. How about half now and half when I receive the product? Oh, it's not required, but if you wish, we could do it that way. Call it collateral. Fair enough. All right, good doing business with you. Um, so six hundred and seventy and one hundred and seven, uh, six hundred and seventy nine and one hundred and seventy would be eight hundred and forty nine. I already deducted the total amount from my gold pool. So okay, okay, fair enough. This bitch rich. Yeah, I literally just don't spend money. <laughs> I've yeah, got. I'm still sitting on two point five k. So fuck you guys. I have two gold. Oh it. Does Granny need to teach fine, the Goliath a, a lesson in loans and interest? You haven't been rolling with the crew long enough, man. You gotta just, you know, you gotta chill. You gotta get some greenbacks. It's all about that green down here, yo. It's Apparently. gold! What are you talking about, green? <laughs> Zen is you know the thing confused. we're going to kill? <laughs> Zen has the little duck bird things going around his head. <laughs> um, so, on my way back from the lumber mill, just as a heads up, I'm going to stop by the post office and once again uh, make a deposit to be delivered to my um, younger Fair. sister's yep. fund yep. that I've been tuition. doing. Mm -hmm. Yalp tuition. I'm going to drop 900 this time. Okay, noted. What the fuck? And I will also have him um, send a, another 100 to uh, the church or temple of Savras that is located in Neverwinter mm -hmm. as a means for payment to see to the um, graves of the Shields of Silver. Again, noted, and make sure noted. that they're still being maintained and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And half of that is to go to the majority of the shields, and then uh, the other 50 is to go, in particular, to the Vergladian twins' graves. Okay. They will all be sought to. Thank you. And I pay him an extra, or them, an extra 10 gold for the services rendered. He gladly accepts. And then I head back to um, the Umber Hulk's shell in to distribute the masks. And uh, I guess, depending upon how much time I have left, spend the rest of the day working on potions and things of that nature as well. Very well. Zen goes hunting. Okay. Zen goes hunting. Animals or people? Because you're asking about bounties. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
If Zin's only reply is a cackle, then I think we should be very worried. I'm just then out in my room. No worries. <laughs> All good. Yeah, okay. Alright, so yes, I assume then... Holly, are you going to hang out back at the inn and work on more items of trinket type or anything else? Yeah. Or, okay. Alright, so... What I'll need, I'll need you to give me two rolls for uh, progress on trinkets, and I will need two medicine rolls from you, Nocris, to determine the progress on potion crafting. All right, so Holly completes a third. Okay. And Nocris is able to create uh, two two potions. Um, I assume you're making are you making healing potions, greater healing potions? What were you trying to craft out of it? Uh, I think at this point I'm going to be working on greater healing potions. So I imagine okay. I don't necessarily get as far as I would like at right. the moment. Right. Right. Which is fine. So you're yeah. able to effectively finish one assuredly, and the second one is more or less there, but still needs some additional additives before it's ready. That's all I'm going to do for the day. Okay. Alright, so Zin, give me a, um, give me two uh, weapon attacks for your prowess and your hunting success out in the wilds. I don't even know what you're hunting for, but... <laughs> Preferably big game, but... Do you want longbow or melee? Do longbow. Because you know it's probably more accurate that you'd be able to shoot things in, and hunt it that way than try to get all up on it and have it run away. I, I mean, one would think. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with your hunting skill, you are able to best a wild boar. Boar sounds delicious right now. I take it to the butchery. Okay. Actually, I field dress that bitch. I carve it myself, and I fucking bring home bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's probably not bacon yet, but it's yes, definitely it will not. Be. <laughs> it's about to be. It's about it's, to be. Yeah. It's, it's just like some. Bread. It's just some strips of the good good. Yep. Very well. All right, so you you come home carrying many porkish gifts. I have brought home the bacon. I look up. <laughs> you most certainly have, dear lord. Yeah. Are you gonna cook all of it or smoke it? I must begin my work now. It is going to be a long night. I can see that. <laughs> I go out back to the Umber Hulk and start building a fucking pit. <laughs> okay. This poor fucking innkeep is just trying to make an honest fucking living. Well, yeah, I think <laughs> I think the best part is that like literally behind the inn is just kind of like dirt. And some some kind of random tracks of carts that go by towards the actual like you know like piers and the docks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And there's just gonna be this so, big bonfire. You're just gonna build a pit there. You're just gonna dig into the dirt a little bit and maybe put some rocks around it. 
Oh no, it's gonna be fucking fancy. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna do this all, all right. fucking night. Alright, well, I mean, if you're gonna spend all night on it, you're probably gonna get the pit done, but I don't think you're gonna cook anything. The cooking is for tomorrow. Oh, okay. Ow. Can you yes. Is there any other way to eat? Don't burn yourself alive taking a lot of acid. Alright, so, with your current um, task at hand, let me have you make a few different rolls for progress and quality. So first and foremost, go ahead and give me a athletics for the strenuous actions necessary for digging and building the physical components of this particular pit that you're making. So you are able to work without any issue through the night or however long you have to to complete this particular task. Um, go ahead and give me some, give me a check for survival to determine the quality of this particular uh, pit that has been crafted. So it is of uh, what I'll call meager make in that it will get the job done. It is not the prettiest thing you've ever seen. However, it is not the worst looking thing you've ever seen. And last but not least, go ahead and give me a nature roll for the uh, efficiency of your ability to utilize this tomorrow for its ability to cook which is good in that you know the proper temperatures and ways to, to cook this particular meat in the ways that you wish but otherwise your machinations through the evening give you one semi-decent but not quite amazing looking pit for cooking all of your bacon slash pork thank you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, that being said, uh, I believe just about everyone has had their evening revelry, the exception of uh, Granny, assuming that she wants Yeah, Granny's to not going to revel. She's going to spend lots of time in contemplation planning out tactics. Like, if you were to go try and find Granny, she would be in her room. The door would be locked. Mm -hmm. You would hear absolutely nothing coming from the other side but you might see a little bit of incense smoke coming out the window or underneath the door. Where is incense? But if you were to look inside, you would see piles and piles of papers as she's taking copious notes and coming up with strategies to help deal, for, deal with this dragon. Noted. She wants this thing fucking gone. All right, well, that effectively is everyone's evening, I assume, in preparation, light drinking and or feasting, unless you're, unless you're a particular Goliath who stayed out all night basically digging and building with rocks and stone. <laughs> so you find yourselves the following morning uh, waking up. The town is still there. There has been no assault upon the good people of Leyland. You smell the faint, wafting scents of pork on a fire. 
I see he's already cooking. And you you see out some of the windows a odd crowd gathered in the street. I poke my head out just to make sure no actual trouble is happening. No, you don't see any particular trouble. You just see a bunch of odd onlookers wondering what the hell this giant has just done in the middle of the street out behind me. <laughs> he has the biggest shit-eating grin on his face. And I have various empty vials when she can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ruin your potion making. I'm just going to make it slightly more inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. I just took a look at that. I found it amusing. You work uh, quick, Flamethone. I am going to treat you all to a family recipe. I look forward to it. Don't worry. There is no cow in this. The cow is delicious. Oh, yes it is. Uh. Is this giant flirting? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd <laughs> ritual behaviors. Just because the fey energy, whatever is made for bugs, look like cows, don't mean they don't eat cow meat. Or pigs. Yes, but... Unless... <laughs> yes, but you are of nature, and I do not know what you eat. I am not psychic. Mostly meat. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Uh, I said I'd try to be better, but I'm not being better. <laughs> I'm not helping. <laughs> All right, well, it is the following morning, so what would people like to do now? Well, after the bacon is cooked, I would like to eat it. After passing it around to my friends. Okay, so sharing your bacon with, with the group. Yes, I bring home the bacon. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> bacon. <laughs> What would you like to do with all the rest of the pork that you have that's not just bacon? How much do you have? You have to have, like, pounds and pounds of this shit. I mean, it is a whole boar. Yep. There are multiple very large people here. Yet you are underestimating how much I can eat. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to find out how much you can eat, because I don't want to imagine how bad it is afterwards. He smiles, but it kind of slowly fades a little bit. Where I am from, luxuries like this do not come often. Eat, drink, be merry. We may die soon. <laughs> and for that matter, <laughs> so might this whole town. You're not wrong. I After the... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> After the bacon's done and I pass it around, uh, I would take the rest of my porkish meal and I bring it inside to the Umber Hulk's shell inn and I donate it to the cook. Well, he appreciatively accepts it and goes about beginning to salt the living hell out of it to preserve it. Um, Hell yeah. Bacon. I'd say I would have done that the night prior, but I'm too broke to afford salt. <laughs> <laughs> that is a new level of broke for a new adventure. Let's be real, guys. You're too no, too you, said you, have, you said you had two gold, right? There's no fucking salt out there worth two fucking gold. I, I, but I, literally, I literally have two coins to rub together, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave me alone. Well, I'm saying, like, if you spent one of those coins, like, you could have enough salt to be able to, like, bathe in it. Yeah, but then yeah. I would be out a coin, and I'd have so much yeah. salt, I wouldn't know what to do with it, just like He's, the bacon. You're not, you're not, wrong. You're not but wrong. You're not wrong. See, but see, what you have to think of is you take if you take one of those coins, right, and you go and you spend it on some salt, whoever 
gives you your change back has to give you lots of other littler coins. <laughs> so then you have more than just two coins. <laughs> but it is not as much as two gold. No, but it is many more shiny things to scrub together. Do you like shiny things? I are love you a, shiny things. Are you a dragon? No. No, she just loves dragons. I throw... 95 copper at, <laughs> at Holly. <laughs> that is so much fucking copper. <laughs> You're literally like throwing like five bricks at her. You could have used that copper. For um, I would also point out that in normal uh, circumstances, you wouldn't simply be able to just money change your money randomly on a whim like that. You have you know to actually what I need go change. <laughs> Well, I thought he had copper on him. I was very no, I do have I do have copper on me. He was talking <laughs> about me, like paying uh, one gold and getting like you know like ninety five silver no, back. No, no, no. When I made this character, I actually bought all of the gear except for the fucking magical oh articles God. and wound up with something like thirty gold left over and ninety five <laughs> copper. <laughs> so, Sounds about right. <laughs> so, Zinn is just walking around with three pouches on his belt. One of them's empty. One of them has, like, almost nothing in it. And the other one is fucking stuffed full of fucking copper. <laughs> anyway, that that bag is now empty. Minus 95. Just the okay. bag at her. So you just made it rain at Holly. Gotcha. Yes. I didn't throw the bag. I threw the contents of the bag. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so, so Holly, you want to give me an acrobatics check? Sure. So you skillfully dodge the onslaught of metallic objects being hurled your way. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to them all basically fall on the ground, some bouncing off rocks. But generally, just making a big strewn pile of gold, uh, strewn pile of copper, among the uh, the dirt and the path down by the docks. As as he watches her jump out of the way, he says, "She even flies like a dragon." <laughs> Please don't kill him, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably tell you she is not a dragon. Argo might be, though. <laughs> I can't wait. Argo is absolutely a dragon in Holly's mind, and nothing can change that. <laughs> <laughs> no amount of saying, I am an elf, not a dragon, is going to convince Holly that Argo is not a dragon. I don't know another dragon being like that. Is definitely either, not though. a dragon. I think she just played along with it. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think Argo would want to change your mind. <laughs> yes, I'm a dragon, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now that everyone has feasted in the morning on bacon, what, uh, what, are, what else are we doing here? What what else is everyone up to? Are we going to set out today? Are we going to continue to burn another day in town? Are we going to do jumping jacks in the streets? Are we going to go? Well, no, up? we can't because Zen dug a fucking pit. This is true. I'm going to help fill in the pit that Zen dug so they can have their street back. I do not understand. There is plenty of street. Why do you need this one section of street for everybody? Why can I not? Ugh, whatever. Fishermen need it for their catches so they can get it back quicker. But bacon. They can't make bacon out of fish. They could cook the fish here. You can smoke fish. We should ask the innkeeper. He is his backyard, basically. I mean, with as much gold as you all have poured into this place, do you not own it? I've given no gold to everybody else. Yeah, I've kind of been living off of everybody else's dime, I assumed, so... I thought you I'm all lived more. here. Wait, no. I am so confused. Why this do we keep coming back for... here? 
Is this the point where Zin just does like the mind blown gesture? <laughs> no, it's just the birds with the little tweet 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 it, over its head again. Headquarters not in town. I don't think any of us are from anywhere near here. I'm from Neverwinter. I'd be the closest, and thus Marcus is closer than I thought from what I said. I'm a local yokel. Anyway, I think, uh, so I'm under the impression that we have two goals ahead of us. One is to find Nocris's not necromancer necromancer and mm -hmm. go kill a dragon, possibly. Hopefully not. You know, hopefully be all like, hey, so this is cool. This cool thing's happening and you should not do anything because if you do something, it won't happen. <laughs> I mean, but on the other hand, I would like a nice new suit of dragon hide armor, so. If you attack this dragon, Zinn is going you to watch you melt. <laughs> <laughs> you pull it, you tank it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one actually is pretty good. You pull it, you tank it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll just cast shield. So and then, <laughs> and then murdered by millions of claws against an ancient green dragon. You know what? Go for it. I want to see how this ends. I want to see the dragon start the fight with mechanics that hit all of us. So then we'll just walk away. <laughs> I'm still here by the entrance of the cave. Have fun. Nocris Misty steps into nothing. <laughs> I haven't pulled that trick out yet in a little bit. I still have plenty of them, thank you. Oh. Um, yeah, I forgot you have that. <laughs> so, I have a lot of spells you don't know about. <laughs> so, uh, are we going for the dragon, then? Is that what I'm getting out of this? Probably. Because I've got... Because yeah. it's, what, two days? Two, yeah. day and a half? Something a couple like of that? days. Okay. Oh, cool. That does work. All right. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't know if that was going to work or not. All right. So here. I, uh, um. Spider. There's your dragon. That's that's what you're up against. Yeah. That's have hot. fun with have fun with your shield, Tanya. It steps on you. Well, it. They kept that in five e for what a dragon can do. You know, banana for scale, also. Yeah, banana for scale. <laughs> um. So I guess. In the background. So I guess, and pardon me, this little bit of role play I'm about to do, since we've decided on a location and we're still sort of around the pit that the Zen made and are finishing our gigantic meal. Um, Zin looks at all of you and says, I do not know most of you very well, and uh, I think I might be going to die with you. However, should someone of you live and I die, he reaches into uh, his chest, his, his breastplate, and pulls out a ring, and that's on a necklace. He and shows it to all of you. And he says, "I would wish that one of you would take this and bring it to a healer." Order, failing that, just hold on to it. I will be back. He says with a smile. But as long as you hold on to this ring. Uh, can I do a possible history check, Juni? See if I can kind of understand the significance of what he's pointing at. I have an idea, but sure, give it a try. Even. Um, from what you can tell, no, you're like, okay, this is a ring. I don't know what the hell that means, but cool. I've got a ring. A, I guess I can take it to a real hero. <laughs> I can 
since right. we're from roughly the same sort of region, like we, you know, we're not obviously in close proximity, would I be able to make a check? Like, would I know anything about this? Yeah, you can make a check. See if you are familiar with those particular customs. You're vaguely familiar that the ring has some significance, but you don't know exactly what it's for. In terms of some some form of, um, I guess I'll use the word anchoring. <laughs> As Zin sc scans the crowd and sees questioning looks, uh, he motions towards the ring. As he puts it back under his breastplate and says this ring has been passed down through my clan which is in no longer in existence I am the last but there are many like me the last of something uh, the ring the ring can carry my soul or your soul if you were to wear it but only should you die Understood. He, he kind of gives a sad smile. Alas, no one was wearing it when uh, <laughs> when my clan died. Well, I'm sure we can at least try and offer that wish to you should we need to. But I do suggest you try and stay alive so that you are the one to carry it out versus one of us. He, gr he gives a huge grin and says, I am the best. I will be carrying you all out. <laughs> I will hold you to that if it so comes to that. You just want me to hold you again, lizard. No, no, I'm pretty sure I don't want you to hold me. <laughs> the last time you held me, you brought me into a room and there was a ghost in there. But you didn't die. Polly hears all this talk about holding, and she just kind of sh like keeps her eyes on Zin and shuffles behind Nakris. <laughs> the PTSD. <laughs> I promise I will be gentle. I don't think you know what that word means. I learned it but yeah. recently. <laughs> I know for a fact he doesn't know what it means. Oh. Oh yeah, more lessons for then. <sighs> yeah, it's all yeah. You can be the one who teaches him common more and introduces him to the language. And what the term gento means. Have fun. I can speak common. It is that weird language you were spouting at the Biomass <laughs> that I want to learn. The angry sounding one? All of it. Very, I know two very angry sounding less languages. Are you talking about this one? Where I Polly then... immediately stops him and just don't, don't. When <laughs> <laughs> you yelled at the cow boss that hit you really hard. It's in shrugs. <laughs> I am interested in learning. I am not smart, but I am strong and determined. Teach me. I'm, I'm one of those things. <laughs> I once got bit in the neck by a bear. I ate the bear. The bear. So <laughs> <laughs> well, someone else can say. I feel like we got way off track. <laughs> You're welcome. We're to start traveling towards the player, right? Right. So I'm assuming Tali is going to make her journey to the house to get the scrolls that she paid for yep. partially the day before. So yep. you make your journey up there. Gallo hands you the two scrolls and accepts the second half of your payment. And 
Are there any other last minute things that anybody would like to do prior to setting out? Would like to kiss the DM. <laughs> Smooches. Smooches. All right. And so. We find ourselves on the road yet again. Does that count as a blessing? Smooching uh, the DM. It's either, a <laughs> it's either a blessing or a curse. You'll find out soon enough. Find that one funny. <laughs> All right, so uh, basically, you you group up in the party and all that good stuff, um, and you head out in tow, heading south making your way to the foothills by a little past midday as the road heading down there is fairly well traveled and you're able to make good time so as midday breaks and you continue you weave your way through the foothills making a passage to reach the edge of the forest <clears throat> and it's getting to be close to nightfall as the sun is starting to set do you want to stop on the outskirts of the forest before entering to make camp for uh, night or yes do you want to enter the forest so we, night. Night. we do the my our the hero's feast now it'll last until the next night and we can do this and be safe while you guys talk to a dragon hopefully it depends on how far in the do forest not get completely how... slaughtered and how far we, and how much we have to travel through it, because I don't know how dense this forest is. Not as dense as my skull. Uh, so, because it seemed like that was the case, everyone would like to halt here to make camp for yeah. the evening. Mm -hmm. That sounds the safest bet to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for the safety, I'd say it's probably maybe a few hours after dark is we do the feast, so we are prepared in case we run into stuff in there because it'll last until 24 hours after it's done yeah it's up to you when you want to actually like begin the consumption of the meal for the buff you could do it um tonight before you turn in you could do it in the morning before you pack up it's basically up to you in terms of when you want to start the clock mm. yeah i, I want to make sure that like if we actually do have to fight the dragon from what we have gathered so far about green dragons, this spell is going to be like a green dragon, like anti-green dragon spell. That's that's what it is. It's for the breath weapon side of things. Um, not to mention frightening presence. Yeah. If you can, if you can for me, uh, Avril, can you link the feast um, that you have listed and the ritual for it? I think she linked it earlier. I didn't see it. I, I, did. just, I could be wrong. I just heard it talked about. I just listed the effects before. <clears throat> I think I just had it pulled up. There it is. It's pretty dope. It's an expensive spell. It is a very expensive spell. Oh, it's only got a casting time of 10 minutes? Oh, no, the <laughs> feast that it ha takes an hour to consume, and it doesn't act activate until it's consumed. Yep. So basically, you have to take a while to eat it to gain the benefits of it in full. Yeah. So, it sounds like me to me, we should find the cave that and actually isolate. Okay, this is no shit where we have to go. Make a camp a little ways away from that and some relative safety. Um, it looks like the... X that we're trying to get to is near the edge of the forest on the northern side, northwestern side, it looks right there. Or, like, to the northwest of the X, rather. So if we can locate... Also. Yeah, if we can locate it, make sure we know where it is, mark it down on the map at a precise location, determine traveling time, rest, Eat the meal after the rest, so that way we have, so that way we're not sleeping while we have the effects on, and then enter with a, you know, no shit. This is gonna 
be the full duration of X, Y, Z. So. The full duration of 24 hours? Oh, well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to waste... So if we were to eat it tomorrow morning, we have at least 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 ish miles to make through forest. That we don't know. And that's yeah. what Knight's getting at, is that we don't know how yeah. dense this thing is, so we don't know what our travel time is. And it took us all day to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, about 35 miles. So we went just over double that through mostly through terrain that we knew on well-traveled roads, uh, except for this last 10 miles. That's the only reason I bring it up. Uh, oh, yeah, that's sure my take on it. it. Well, it's more like, let's call it 15, maybe 18 miles off-road. Sure. It's about half the journey. Plus, you got to account for the fact that even if we do find the lair, like, no shit, this is where the lair exactly is. We have absolutely zero doubt in our mind that Dragon is inside. That there's still, like, the amount of time it's going to take us to get from lair entrance to Dragon itself, which could be, you know, upwards of an hour or more for exploration. So, I agree with everything the knight has suggested. So. So yeah, let's hold off on the feast for a little bit, it sounds like, and then yeah, we'll explore the forest in the morning and try and figure out exactly where it is, and then we can make a decision from there. Does that sound good with everyone? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, go ahead and give me some people to do watch. I'll take first. I'll take second. I'll take third. I will take last, then, if we're going to break it up into fours. Okay, that's fine. Man, I get to sleep through the whole night. <laughs> you need it. Wouldn't you be exhausted due to the all night before? Yeah, yeah that's no. true. You would. If you didn't take a, a full-blown long rest, you would, in fact, be exhausted at this point. What is exhaustion to a man of my size? Uh, it's bad nice. things for your saves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad saving throws. <laughs> Alright, so, as you guys basically make camp and you get all situated and settled in, you begin, you know, having a light meal or a dinner meal, whatever you're going to call it, not the actual feast, and you settle through that and everyone gets prepped for sleep. If you want to spend some time before going to sleep to work on things like potions or crafts or anything else like that, now would be the time to do so. Otherwise, if you're ready to just turn in for the night, I'll go ahead and begin the watches. Yeah, I don't have anything planned, so. I will. Okay, let me dump that down. Yeah, I'm he's he's handing them out apparently. So. Yep. Um. Okay. I will try and work on doing another potion greater healing potion if i can to and try to finish if, the one you were working on before yeah and if i notice that holly begins to pay attention i will include her in how it works and how it's done okay nope i just knock everything over <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead and give me your roll with disadvantage how's that i <laughs> will do that <laughs> No. Okay. You bitch. <laughs> no, I'm not actually going to knock everything over. I'm not going to ruin give his me the potion making. Give me the medicine check with disadvantage. Let's no. See. No thanks to backsies. Okay, 11. so with the 11, you complete the potion you had started previously and are able to make a little headway in the beginnings of a third, but it's still fairly far off from completion. I take the one that I just finished and I toss it to Holly. Well, thank you. What was it? A greater or a normal? Greater. A greater. 
I shall treasure it always. Until you drink it. I was say, until you drink it. And please make sure I drink it before, you know, it's too late. All right. <laughs> That's comforting. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after that, everyone effectively settles in and begins slumber. And watch begins for the first watch. And nothing interesting occurs during the first watch. The second watch comes up. You hear some uh, distant movements into the forest. Something large-ish is stirring and moving about, but... You hear them kind of far off, and you don't believe that they're at all moving towards you, so. You continue to monitor it during the rest of your watch, but it uh, it definitely seems like whatever beast that may be is going in the other direction. And third watch rolls around. Yeehaw. Um, while I'm on watch, can I uh, take some of my time to swap which spells I have in my ring of spell storing? Yes, you can do that. Okay. I'll list and, it in chat in a minute. Yep. And uh, nothing interesting occurs during your segment of watch. And then we go on to the last watch before dawn. And we don't have anything interesting there either. So just list out for me the spells when you get to it for the change. And uh, otherwise we are complete through the night. For my cleric spells, I swap out Flame Strike and Dawn for Mass Cure Wounds and Raise Dead. Raise me, baby. Raise me up before you go, girl. Yeah, Knockers doesn't need to be a bard. Knockers <laughs> is not a bard. He does have a way with words, though, apparently. Better than most. I mean, Holly thinks so, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think Tully is. I think Granny's just jaded. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going over your spell, your uh, spells in the ring here, making sure I have them noted here. <clears throat> that way, I don't have to spend any actual spell slots to cast important things, <laughs> like shield. Absorb elements. So glad I grabbed that. And it's abjuration. It's a beautiful spell. All right. So you get through the morning. Everyone is, you know, rested and whatever else. You can then pack up and get ready to set out into the wild green yonder before you. <laughs> Let's go. So you set out in the morning after your light meal or whatever it is you're going to eat and you begin making your way through the forest, kind of winding through the path that are kind of appears to show itself to you as you go, but it's very hard to track as it's not been traversed in quite a while. But this particular path that you're following is kind of just leading you through the forest and kind of you know moving around. You do find to the south some old, you know, ruins, whatever you want to call them, some rubble of former structures, but it's so well degraded and, and downtrodden, and you find no signs of life that it doesn't really warrant any further inspection. And as you continue deeper in and moving along, you come across a area right around this particular spot where when you move past it, 
You have a sense of cold, almost like some kind of spirit or something is kind of passing by you. But in other words, you don't. In other ways, you do not see anything or sense any presence. Just that feeling of cold that kind of washed over you as you passed by. So um, no, noting the location to be right here. In fact, I'll even get a different color marker just in case. Make it easier to see. Mm -hmm. Zinn investigates. All right, how would you like to investigate? I stand where it is coldest. Okay. And look around. All right, give me uh, an investigation. Oh, I am not good at that. Zinn, look around and find bird poopy and squirrels eating acorns. But otherwise, nothing. Um, what does this area look like that we're feeling this cold presence in? Does it look like the rest of the forest? Or? It does, yeah. There's no discernible difference, really, that you can tell in the forest here. It basically just looks like any other patch of forest that's presently around you. It just has this cold spot that, as you're wandering through, some kind of something basically makes you feel colder as you pass through it but otherwise um, has no difference that you can determine. As we're passing through, and I know Zen just kind of standing there, I will activate my Divine Sense mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that there is nothing foul afoot, if you will, besides what we already know of, or what we relatively know of. Mm-hmm. So uh, with your Divine Sense... Mm -hmm. You do not detect anything out of out of place, let's say. Okay. Sounds good. Is the dirt upturned? I know you said it looks exactly the same, but there's the there is nothing that looks different about this particular area that you're in than any other section of the forest. And from your investigation, you detect nothing that draws you towards any sign of evidence of something beyond the fact that it's cold. Holly doesn't like this, so she'll stop uh, her horse and turn to the group. If it's okay with you guys, I would like about 11 minutes. Sure. What do you need from us? Nothing. And she'll get off of her horse, and she'll just sit, and she's going to ritual cast Commune with Nature. Okay. And a spectral version, uh, or a spectral uh, form of her totem, the bear, comes and will give me three pieces of information. As is my level 10 skill for Barbarian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I guess I want to know if there are any powerful beings, be they Celestial Fae, Fae's Elements, or the Undead. Um, if there's any influence from other planes. Uh, and any prevalent plants, minerals, or animals. So... Or peoples. Okay. So, to your first, um, you do not detect any celestial, fae, demon, fiend, whatever. You do detect some form of undead. It barely just starts to register on the, th on the thread of what it's telling you in terms of its potency. Okay. But that location you locate is... I'll get another color. over here um, the second half of that being you were inquiring about um, presence of planar existence or interference mm -hmm. so in line with that it is detected from your your familiar your spiritual 
so uh, your spiritual bear that tells mm -hmm. you about this information that this particular area does in fact have some kind of planar disturbance or rift uh, crossover with some different plane of existence in this particular in location okay and to the third point for any plants animals etc or people um, you note as well that similarly in this direction which I'll get yet a third color <laughs> you note that in this direction over here you have a sense of some form of uh, I don't necessarily want to say powerful human presence but some so, some form of person of presence that this spirit is communing and or noting is in that direction as well uh holly will finish communing with her 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 spirit totem and she'll lock eyes with nakris and go something's not right here i know we have a dragon to confront uh -huh. but there is something undead and powerful here. Better than not leave that around. I'll kind of like, uh, I guess I'll pull out a map and kind of cross off or circle where I think it'll be, just on a, on a map. Are you able to get the sense that it is moving or likely to move from its spot? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So from what you can tell, the sense of the person seems somewhat stationary. The sense of the undead presence that you noted does seem like it is mobile or potentially is not stationary. And as far as the planar uh, existence that is here, you tell that it is stationary. I will relay all this information. <laughs> The most immediate threat that we know about is the dragon. And these are other good things to know about, but I don't necessarily know if they are an immediate threat at this point. And as unhelpful or as uncaring as this may seem, we need to deal with what we know is the biggest threat possible at the moment. Which is Kalugi Lomotara and dealing with her and her possible destruction of the entire town. Once what if saw... this is the reason? What if this is the reason she wants to destroy everything? Because this is not this is not right. It certainly be, be, be considered an intrusion of her territory. I do agree with all of those points, but we don't know anything about it and we need to look to what is ahead it could also be used as a bargaining chip to deal with her it could give us her favor if we tell her where they are well we know roughly where they are thanks to holly so we already have that chip in our favor at this point old knob bone is the bigger threat in terms of just what she is capable of and what she know what we know she will do in some capacity not to mention she's the one that we spent plenty of time preparing for preparation is not necessarily my worry at this point if i for half a second even thought that these other items that holly mentions was of equal was of greater evil than the potential that kalu could possibly do i would drop all our plans and instantly go after them but i just don't know so i have to compartmentalize what i do know and i believe old knobbone is the bigger threat at this junction holly what do you think since you had direct not communication i guess but sense of these items what do you perceive as the biggest threat here Hmm. I honestly don't know. We have a dragon that wants to destroy an entire town, an ancient dragon that wants to destroy an entire town. 
or powerful undead whatevers that possibly also want to destroy the town. I don't know. As much as I understand the undead, it's more pressing for the dragon since if the dragon agrees with us about the undead being an issue, that will solve the undead issue. The dragon will also likely disagree with having a planar influence in the area if she's truly unaware of it or isn't sure where it is we give her a rough, rough area that's also likely a good bargaining chip yeah, it sounds like we should still visit the, the dragon first and we can take care of the other things afterwards provided we are not dead Great. and as Grand Punk said if we offer to deal with these minor pests for her. It could certainly help. Very well, good. Alright. Let's continue on. Oh. Oh, go ahead. I'll give my, my spirit bear a little pat on the head and then he goes away. And I'll get back on my horse and we'll, we'll continue on. Okay. So you, you continue on a path trying to locate the area that was marked on the map, which as you make your journey, you do come upon that area where it was marked. And when you arrive in that particular area, you don't particularly see the presence of any lair or cave you could directly see, but go ahead and uh, start searching for it. You can give me a uh, investigation check. Everyone? So, yep. Not too bad. Um, can I cast the guidance on myself beforehand? You could, yeah. Sorry, what are we rolling? Uh, investigation. Uh, actually use survival in this instance. You need to try and find. Uh, I mean, or I guess it's more of like you're trying to find the you're trying to find the actual uh, location, not so much as okay. actually like tracking something. So investigation, got it. Thank yep. you. And I can say that with the rules that are present, uh, you do in fact locate the layer, <laughs> even though we don't have them all. Um, let me make another color marker. So the layer in question was actually over here. And as you searched it out, and found its true location. You rallied the group, making your way to the entrance, as it is now beginning to turn after midday, maybe about uh, one or two o'clock in the afternoon. But everyone finds themselves at the entrance of the lair. I note that this map is fairly big, so you may have to adjust placement, scaling, and or everything else. And let me give you some uh, descriptive nature about what you have walked into to start us off. So as you uh, enter this particular area where the forest kind of turns from a nice green forest to, to a kind of soggy, soppy bog swamp. So you see before you a few scattered pine trees in a vine-covered cliff in front of you. 
there are two large openings that you can see in the cliff in front of you. One of them is probably about 40 feet up in the air uh, up the cliff, and the other is about 20 feet or so up in the air. Uh, looking in, you know, kind of your allotment with where those areas are. The cliff that you're looking at that is about 40 feet up is over here. And the one that's about 20 is over here. And then further uh, from these caves, you see a faint and odd dim green glow radiating out of these areas. And just kind of scanning around and panning, you note that also over here, there is an entrance at ground level that appears to have some stairs going up, hidden behind some vines, where you can see a similarly faint glow of green coming out from within the cavern. In front of you, and in front of these little entrances, like here and here in the water, you see probably somewhere between 10 to 20 or so pikes that have been driven into the wet bog beneath, where various skulls and heads of rotting and undead corpses and pieces are impaled upon them, warning against uh, you know further trespass. And so here you are, outside of the cave, staring down uh, some greenery and some glow from within. Let's mark it and come back when we're fully prepared. I was going to say, well, you have keen mind, so we know where it is, but... Um... <laughs> Ta -da. Actually... actually... <laughs> I'll have you know, I took the Outlander background with the feature Wanderer. You have an excellent memory for maps and geography. First fucking sentence. <laughs> well, that's great. So, do you want to do you want to actually do that and peace out, or what do you want to do? That's what Zinn suggests. That's what I'm suggesting. Is that we do as we originally planned. We found our our goal. We know where it's at. Uh, I'm fairly certain of Zen's ability to lead us back here should we need to. Uh, and on top of that, like if we go and eat, we do our, re our short rest or long rest or whatever. We come back in the morning, we come back right after we make a camp or whatever, doesn't matter. As long as we eat that meal, we'll be fine. Because that was the whole goal was to be immune to poison. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll Here. be fine. Yup. I don't uh, like it when the DM says that. Can you not say that? In <laughs> Juni, be fine. Juni would never lie to us. We'll be immune to all damage when we eat these guys. It'll be fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, immune to all damage? Mm -hmm. no, she won't be able to do anything because if she can't breathe poison at us, what's she going to do? Use her giant claws that are as big as each of us put together? Nah, it'll be fine. I'm stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I like what I will do what I will do for the sake of speed, because I do want to kind of wrap up the session here, yeah. um, is you guys can basically, like, back out of the entrance here, maybe, like, you know, 80 feet or however far you feel is valid to make camp to be able to cook your meal and eat it and consume it. And if you would like to sleep overnight or anything like that, we can have you do that as well. Um, otherwise, if you want to basically just run off, eat, and come back, um, we can do that. But it is kind of like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so that's just the time of day. So let me know kind of what your thoughts are there with the preparation, but assume that if we would like to go make camp and do all the food stuff, we can do that. It'll take an hour, so you'd be looking at, let's say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon to then resume coming back to this location. Unless you would like to rest longer, in which case you can rest longer. I'd say just do the feast and then go in. Is it only be 3? Correct. That's yep, that sounds good to me. I'm fine with that. 
I'm sorry, what's it. the plan? I'm fading pretty quick over here. Right, and that's why, that's why I'm trying to wrap it. So we're going to basically assume that we'll do the plan of you back off, you have your meal and feast. Right. So you get that buff. It takes about an hour, so you come back. It'll roughly be 3 o'clock. You'll be back in this position to then continue to explore the remnants of the lair and have your so, move. Okay. Cast this button gotcha. off. You guys can just add your hit point maximum and stuff now. Yeah, I would flag it as temporary HP, but basically yep. what you're going to be doing is do it rolling a 2d10. So everyone will roll a 2d10 to determine how many temporary hit points you get to add to your maximum. Oh. Yay. But if you want to track it, I don't think you can add it to your ma uh, add it to your minimum and have it show above your max. You have to actually add it in temporary HP and then adjust your maximum accordingly and then once the 24 hours is up we have to then pull it back down but i'll keep track of that yeah <laughs> immune to poison wow oh and just as a thing since i get to choose what the food is for it's just all bacon and tea perfect <laughs> no alcohol to you alcoholics Bacon Holly tea. is not an alcoholic. Holly, she just puts you. it away very nicely. The granny that wakes up double fisting mugs. It's a good thing alcohol. I'm going to sleep because I'm about to be pretty fucking pissed about this roll. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I saw it and I'm like, okay, all right, fair enough. It is what it is. Um, so, anyways. I'm yes. Uh, so, yes, Tamari HP maxes, etc. Um, wonderful. You're here. You're at the lair. We'll find out what happens. Not next week, but the week after on Dragon Ball Z. Woo! Good. Yay. Bedtime. <laughs>